Welcome to my reaction to the second record from Lana Del Rey's album. Did you know that there's a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard? As is the norm, I pulled up a photograph and put it on the screen. And the photograph I've used is connected to an article which discusses Lana Del Rey's struggle to be mysterious in pop. Bearing in mind I do no research, this is the most minimal of reading. I noticed that when she started, she called herself Lizzie Grant, which I believe is her name. And then she rebranded to fit, I think, without having heard the music, to fit probably that whole Americana, 50s, 60s, Marilyn Monroe, Hollywood vibe, Lana Del Rey. And it looks like over the years she's been challenged by a certain section of pop music society who are kind of calling her a fake because she's adopted a persona. Now, I haven't delved into uh, the music and the videos to really get a complete grip on what the persona is. I've just got what I've got from this album and a little bit of that Glastonbury performance where I'm believing it is Vaseline over the lens, beautiful woman, photographed, movie star style, Americana, tumbleweeds, wind blowing through your hair, white dress, everything that I thought was romantic about America when I watched the old American movies when I was a kid. And is there anything wrong with being fake or adopting a persona? Like the answer is clearly no. My favorite rock star is Alice Cooper, right? He wasn't born Alice Cooper. Vincent Fernier, he's a singer of a rock band. The rock band's called Alice Cooper and he eventually adopts the name himself. So today, You'll see Alice Cooper, an old bloke with makeup dripping down his face. In some ways, I would say that my favorite rock star is kind of aligned with Lana Del Rey. The separation of yourself to what you want to give to music. I like that. It's just dawning on me now, but I may have, in terms of my musical background and what I like in the world, given that I grew up watching the seven year itch on the TV, Marilyn Monroe with her skirt rising up, listening to Alice Cooper. Yeah. Come on, let's listen to side, side C, record two. Lana Del Rey's, did you know that there is a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard? Let's change records. So the second sleeve is a power plant and the second sleeve does have the song credits on it and we definitely finished side b with kintsugi so we're going to start side c with fingertips written by lana del rey and drew erickson vocals by lana del rey piano Hammond B3, Prophet Bass, Prophet Pad, Wilitzer, Mellotron Choir, Strings, String Arrangement by Drew Erickson. You know my feelings on this where you list every single thing you did. You used a Prophet Bass, you used a Prophet Pad, you used a Wilitzer, you used a Mellotron Choir, you used Strings. I mean, a lot of those are just basically keyboards. But it's like you're showing off of how many things you can do, which is fine. And I bet the fans are actually quite interested in knowing what instruments exactly were used. Because I think this is one of those albums that the fans will delve deep. Deep dive! They'll do a deep dive. Anyway, what colours the vinyl? We know it's black. So let's put it on and start with fingertips. Side C. Side C. Give it a little bit of a brush. Okay, here we go. Back into the world of Nostalgic Americana. When I look back, a diary from a beautiful woman. Plastic bags, 
Thinking I wish I could extrapolate some small intention. Quite complicated Why lyrics. You just get your attention for a minute. So, what I mean is to use the word extrapolate. It's not complicated, but it's not very pop, is it? Using the word extrapolate. Listen to that instrumentation swelling. Analyze the music or analyze the lyrics, but just idea, the what hits your ears is pretty. Them, it's like the opening of Brighter Later by Nick Drake. It is like reading your diary out, making it fit the music. Or making the music fit the lyrics. Be interesting to know which way round it is. The Manic Street Preachers would have the lyrics, and James Dean Bradfield would try and make the music. Actually, I'm not sure about that. It's the eternal dilemma of the songwriter. You've written some music and you present it with lyrics. You make the lyrics fit the music. You present it with lyrics. And then you make the music fit the lyrics. Making the lyrics fit the music versus making the music fit the lyrics. And the reason I'm saying all this here is because I get this vibe from this. She's got a page of writing that she's singing. When I was 15, naked next to our neighbors did a drive. You could Suzanne Vega this. You could take the music away completely and have this sung a cappella. Swim with the fishes. Swim with the fishes. So I would, I would genuinely like to know what the background, so please tell me in the comments, what's the background to this song? It sounds like she could have just sung this or spoke this as poetry. Doesn't need the music. So I'm assuming she's just... Making the music, I think the music has been created to fit the lyric. Am I right or am I wrong? Some of the builds and the swells are reminiscent of what Phil Spector did to Let It Be by the Beatles. Strings and choirs introduced to pretty it up. Whereas I'm suggesting this could have been Tom's Dynard. This could have been Tom's Dynard. Those of you who don't know, go and listen to Tom's Diner by Suzanne Vega, the original version. Tell me what you think down in the comments. Tell me what you think. So this initial listen, I'm taking in the soundscape. But I think what's happening here is I think there's something quite deep going on here lyrically. I 
give myself two seconds to breathe. I give myself to go back to being my serene Is she talking about giving herself to Satan or did I mishear that? I bet I miss I, I must have misheard that. Two seconds to be fingertips. Oh, listen to that instrumentation. Gave myself two seconds to cry. There's a very big difference between giving yourself two seconds and giving yourself to Satan. That's what I'll say on this one, okay? So I do apologise. Now, obviously, we're going to listen to that again without me talking shit over the top of it. But I just wanted to get that across. That that sounded like a diary entry written without the intention of making a song and then you set it to music which is very different to just people getting together and writing a song let's just have a little look through this is fingertips okay when i look back tracing fingertips over plastic bags thinking i wish i could extrapolate some small intention or maybe just get your attention for a minute or two. That's fine. Tracing fingertips over plastic bags. I'm trying to think under what circumstances you're tracing your fingertips across plastic bags. Hang on. I'm going to genuinely think about this now. When I look back, tracing fingertips over plastic bags, thinking, I wish I could extrapolate some small intention from this. Or maybe just get your attention for a minute or two. Plastic bags. Plastic bags full of possessions from your past. You've moved. You've put everything in plastic bags and they're just chucked in the corner of the room. You've never opened them up to place them into your current life. So they are memories of the past. Or perhaps, I was going to say plastic bags full of old photographs, but they would have been in cardboard wrappers. I'm not sure. Let's move on. This is my interpretation. I don't care what anyone else thinks. Will I die or will I get to that 10 year mark where I beat the extinction of telomeres? Okay, I'm going to have to look up what telomeres means. Where I beat the extinction of telomeres. Right, telomeres. Google. Tel oh, telomeres. A telomere is a region of repetitive nucleotide sequences associated with specialized proteins at the end at the ends of linear chromosomes. Telomeres are a widespread genetic feature most commonly found in you. Carried OTs. In most, if not all, species possessing them, they protect the terminal regions of chromosomal DNA from progressive uh, de degradation and ensure the integrity of linear chromosomes by preventing DNA repair systems from mistaking the very ends of the DNA strand for a double strand break. Research on disease risk. Let's click there. Certain lifestyle factors have been shown to prematurely shorten telomere length. Smoking is negatively correlated to telomere length. The average human loses roughly 25 to 27 base pairs per year due to telomere shortening. A study of telomere length in white blood cells of chronic smokers revealed an additional five base pairs lost per year. Obesity. Oh, Jesus. Obesity is another factor that contributes to accelerated telomere shortening. Observational studies have found shortened telomeres in many types of experimental cancers. So let's look back in terms of what she said. Will I die or will I get to that 10 year mark where I beat the extinction of telomeres? This to me then is a worry about mortality. I can, I can appreciate this. Holy shit. A worry about mortality, a worry about hereditary outcomes, diseases. Is Lana here saying that she is worried about dying, about getting cancer because someone in her family has suffered? This would fit. And if I do, where I beat the extinction, if I beat the extinction, if I do beat it, will you be there with me? Father, sister, brother. Verse three goes into Charlie, stop smoking. Okay, so maybe we are, maybe we are genuinely in this song worried 
for the health of someone who smokes and the fact that it does shorten. And we know this is a fact. It shortens their lifespan. Just because I, my uncle lived a long life smoking and drinking, they, are, they would be the anomaly. You shouldn't look at someone who lives a long life smoking 100 cigarettes a day and say, well, that means that the science is wrong. No, there are always anomalies. Charlie, stop smoking. Caroline, will you be with me? Will the baby be all right? Will I have one of mine? Is this, can I handle it even if I do? Is this, is this the worry that someone with a child, if they were to die, Charlie and Caroline, the baby would then be left with you to look after? Like you're like the godmother or whatever. I don't know. Will I have one of my own? Can I handle it even if I do? It's said that my mind is not fit. Or so they said to carry a child, I guess I'll be, this is now linking in, this is a fear of dying and a fear of not being good enough to have a kid. It wasn't my idea, the cocktail of things that twists neurons inside. So this is, but without them, I'd die. So this is taking drugs, yeah, whether it's prescription, perhaps it's, this is prescription drugs for a mental health issue. It wasn't my idea, the cocktail of things that twists neurons inside, but without them, I'd die. They say there's irony in the music, that it's a tragedy. I see nothing Greek in it. I suppose Greek is the whole tragedy and irony, Greek, Greek thing. Give me a mausoleum in Rhode Island with dad, grandma, grandpa and Dave, who hung himself real high in the national park sky. It's a shame and I'm crying right now. To get to you, save you, if I take my life, find your astral body, put it into my arms, give you two seconds to cry, take you home. I'll give you a blanket. Your spirit can sit and watch TV by my side. Cause baby ran through a time when I felt you were doing it. Well, there's, there's a lot to unpack there. I'm not really sure. It wasn't my idea of the cocktail. It wasn't my idea of the cocktail of things that twist neurons inside. So it's someone who has mental health issues, who is taking pills, tablets, but it is twisting your mind slightly. But we are dwelling upon the idea of, of when you die, you will, your final resting place will be with your family. It sounds like Dave, who's Dave? Yeah, Uncle Dave, the late Uncle Dave. I think we've referenced him before, side B. The longing for a sense of permanence and a desire to be reunited with loved ones after death. Yeah, okay. So I quite like that. So we're talking about the fact you, you've got to have a belief. This is where you've got to have, this is where it helps if you have some kind of religious belief, the belief in the afterlife, the belief that if something bad happens and you, and you unfortunately pass away, you will be reunited with your loved ones in the next life. If you don't believe as a next life, then you're just dust. You're just dust. I couldn't handle it. I was in Monaco. I couldn't hear what they said on the telephone. I had to sing for the prince in two hours, sat in the shower, gave myself two seconds to cry. It's a shame that we die. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not going to click on what someone thinks that means. But to me, that's just the thing where someone important to you uh, leaves you passes away, whatever. But you've got to get on with your life. You're told someone's gone. And yet you're about to perform for the prince. Everyone in the world's going, Oh, look at that. Lala Del Rey's going to play for the prince in a minute. But you're just sitting in the shower thinking this is my life. This is my life. When I was 15 naked, next door neighbors did a drive by pulled me up by my waist, long hair to the beachside. I wanted to go out like you swim with the fishes that he caught on Rhode Island beaches, but sometimes it's just not your time. I mean, I don't know, that's very specific. That's a diary entry, isn't it? Obviously something happened when she was 15. She's had some sort of incident. Caroline, what kind of mother was she to say I'd end up in institutions? All I wanted to do was kiss Aaron Green. I take it Aaron Green, some like high school sweetheart or something. I don't know. The, uh, the prom king, the, 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 the football, the football guy. There's all in American teen things. There's always a football guy, isn't there? 
All I wanted to do was kiss Aaron Green and sit by the lake, twisting lime into the drinks that they made. Have a babe at 16 in the town I was born in and die. That thing where that the hometown girl, isn't it? You marry the football guy at school, your college sweetheart, you have a baby, you stay in the same town and then you die. Americana. Aaron ended up dead and not me. What the f is wrong in your head to send me anyway? Never to come back. Exotic places and people don't take the place of being your child. I give myself two seconds to cry. Let it crash over me like the waves in the sea. Call me Aphrodite as they bow down to me. Sunbather, moon chaser, queen of empathy. I give myself two seconds to breathe and go back to being a serene queen. I just needed two seconds to be me. It sounds like somebody who is facing and being told about the death of people important to her and it takes a lot to take it in and you end up just saying, I, I appreciate everything. I, I appreciate it all. I appreciate what you want me to be. You want me to just marry him, have a baby, settle down, be a housewife and die. People around me are dying. I appreciate all of that. Just give me, just give me a few seconds to myself, please. Just give me a few seconds to myself. Let's listen to this one now properly. When I look back, tracing fingertips over plastic bags, thinking I wish I could extrapolate some small intention. Well, maybe just get your attention for a minute or two Will I die or will I get to that ten-year mark Where I beat the extinction of telomeres I still stand by the yes, fact I do. Will you be there with me We're putting Mother music to lyrics It's like the musician's job is to pretty up some quite deep lyrics. The dynamics of the music, the swells. I guess I'll be fine. Tremolo. Kind of Fender Rhodes type What's thing in the background there. Idea, the cocktail of things that twist neurons inside. We know what it is. I think it is. Die. They say there's a That'll be the Hammond. Hammond B3. It's a tragedy. I mean, a Hammond organ Say usually has a rotating give speaker. Give me a mausoleum in Rhode Island with Which creates a kind of tremolo. Her voice. In the national park sky. I mean, I've said this a million times now, but her voice is so fragile, so pretty. It's like impossibly pretty, isn't it? So that choir you hear in the background, when it comes in, Phil Spector style. It's played on a Mellotron. A Mellotron it was like a synthesizer before there was such a thing as a synthesizer. It was an old. It's like a keyboard with loops of tape inside. And when you press a key, it plays the tape for each key. So if you want a choir. Fifteen naked 
crooked next door neighbors did a drive by pulled me up by my waist long head to the beach side see what i mean to go out like you says the malatron choir that he got on rude island beaches but sometimes it's actually if you want to hear that kind of sound if you want to hear the sound that the person orchestrating the music here is going for, listen to the long and winding road by the Beatles. Go and do that. Go and listen to the long and winding road by the Beatles. some point we're going to need like a pop song on this album because I have to side B and now this song all emotional heartfelt pretty we are going to need a pop song in a minute will we get one or is this whole album going to be an expression from the heart Sun the moon chaser, queen of empathy. I give myself two seconds to breathe. I give myself two seconds. Go back to being my serene queen. Just I just needed two seconds to be. I just need to, I just needed two seconds to be. I just needed two seconds to breathe. Just give me some time. Give me just a little more time. Oh, okay. Okay. Driven by the piano. You can really hear hear the room, you can hear the, you can hear the instrument. That is a really interesting microphone setup. It's like a pretty short song. She went to Paris with a suitcase in my hand. A suitcase in her hand. I had to leave. Then she had to leave. No, they wouldn't understand. They wouldn't understand. When you know, you know. When you know, when you, you, know you know. When you know, you know. It's time. It's time to go. It's time to go. What does she know? So that's what. When you know, you so the. The, the, the question that, that I got on my... The question I've got now is what does she know? She took a trip to Spain. Just a notebook in my hand. Just a notebook in her hand. This is like a, the life... The life of a writer who just gets to observe. Gets to attend a coffee shop and sit there and watch the world when pass you by. Know, you know. In France you or in know, Spain. Midway through the song, we need to know what it is when that if you know, you know. And whatever it is she knows, like the it makes her want to leave. When everyone starts bright, brighter than you are. That's nice. Vocals are like just 
breathing. Like you can hear, you can hear her lungs. She flew back home. It is everything they say. Okay, so it's called Paris, Texas, like the film. Diary entry, isn't it? When you're home, you're home, you're Venice, right, California. Right, when you're right, you're right. Even when you're wrong. I flew back home, it seems everything's the same, except that you weren't home. Hello, I called to no one. So, someone who goes to uh, what were you saying? Someone who goes to Paris. When you know, you know. Someone who goes to Spain. When you know, you know. When everyone's star is bright, brighter than you are, it's time to go. When everyone's star is bright, brighter than you are. Is that a... Uh, see, to me, that, that sounds like um, an expression about celebrity. If you're trying to be famous, but you look around and everyone's outshining you, it's time to go, time to move on. I'm sure she doesn't mean that. This is such an introspective diary-like album. I flew back home. It seems everything's the same. Except that you weren't home. So she goes out and about Paris, Spain, she's writing, she's observing, she's living life. And then the person she, when she goes home, the person that she's hoping will be there to love her has just thought, sod this for a laugh and left. Okay, I, that's what I get from that. Who knows what it's really about, but this, you come here for my reaction, not for me to, you know, shut up. song next song a grandfather please stand on the shoulders of my father while he's deep sea fishing that's the name of the song the name of the next song is grandfather please stand on the shoulders of my father while he's deep sea fishing written by Lana Del Rey and Riopi 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 drums, electric guitars, Korg synth, Mellotrons, Juno bass, Korg bass, piano, saxophones. Riopi's performance originally released on Riopi, Tree of Light. Riopi's performance recorded and mixed. So Riopi, so Riopi's a person. Written by Lana Del Rey and Riopi. Let's look up Riopi. Let's look up Riopi. Riopi, French pianist. Jean Philippe Riopi, born in 1983, known professionally as Riopi is a French pianist and composer, self-taught since a very young age. He has performed in many international prestigious halls and written several albums classified as contemporary classical music. In March 2023, he was featured on the track Grandfather, Please Stand on the Shoulders of My Father While He's Deep Sea Fishing. I thought she was going to sing Three Blind Mice then. Okay, that's an interesting opening line. Is this addressing what we talked about at the beginning of the video? The Lizzie Grant thing and the transformation to Lana Del Rey? That it took thousands of people to put me 
Yeah, it is, you know, it is. I'm not even going to read the lyrics. Yes. Yeah. Okay. This is the creation of Lana Del Rey from the girl that was before. God, if you're near me, send me three white butterflies or an Wow. Sitting while I'm drinking. Grandfather, please stand on the shoulders of my father while he's deep Wow, it's so specific. I know she said Pacific, but the lyrics are so specific to her life. It's the sort of thing you can only do when you're already famous. You try writing about your grandfather standing on your father's shoulders while he's deep sea fishing. When you haven't yet made it, no one will give a shit. This is kind of the pop song I was asking for. Kind of. Well, not at all, but kind of. Very brighter later Nick Drake still. This is like Nick Drake. Phil Spector's work with the Beatles. Yeah, and a bit of Richie Edwards. Wow, who'd have thought it? Wow. Wow. It's a proper traditional song now. in featuring Wake you up Father John Misty. We, we referenced letting the light in on a song earlier on the album. The Leonard Cohen reference. Vocal gymnastics, but not not of the Mariah Carey type. That's his ride. That's his ride. OK, 
Okay, this is the pop song, isn't it? Now, this is the pop song I was asking for. Traditional song, a chorus with a, a male harmonies. This is it. This was a single, I would assume. Where the music just smooched down there. Yeah, that was the pop song, wasn't it? Side C ended with a pop song. Here's the important question, though. Are you going to join me for side D? Let's flip the record. To side D. Actually, thinking about it now, that last song featuring Father John Misty, that sounded like Wild Horses by the Rolling Stones. I wish I'd said it now when it was playing, but just thinking about it now... Since it just finished, I've been singing Wild horses couldn't drag me away. And it just makes me realise that and there's only one reason I'd be singing that. It's because it must have reminded me of it. There we go. So side D. We're going to start with Margaret featuring Bleachers. I've got no idea who Bleachers is. A band called Bleachers? If you're a solo artist, you wouldn't call yourself Bleachers, would you? You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that by choice, would you? Lana Del Rey, exotic, mysterious, fine. Bleachers. Here, have you seen Bleachers over there? Shut up. Right. Here we go. Perhaps we can look up. Perhaps straight off the bat, we'll look. Perhaps straight off the black bat, we'll look up who Bleachers is. Hang on. Margaret featuring bleach featuring bleachers. Bleachers. Let's just look up let's just Google bleachers. Hang on. All I have to do A little bit of uh, Groovy kind of love. When I'm feeling blue, all I have to do is take a look at you. Then I'm not so blue This is a simple song I'm Gonna write it. Honestly there, that didn't have something like groovy kind of love, didn't it? When I'm feeling blue 
All I have to do is take a look at you. Then I'm not so blue. I can play it on the guitar as well. Bleachers? No, it's not. Bleachers is an American rock band from New Jersey and the official stage name of songwriter and record producer Jack Antonoff. Okay, so what I just said. So Jack Antonoff is responsible, isn't he, for some of the production on this album. Therefore, when I just mocked someone who might call himself Bleachers, I just mocked the producer of the album, Jack Antonoff. Jack Antonoff and Gary Kasparov sitting together in a room, both playing backgammon. Now, drafts. Shut up. Bleacher's rock music is heavily influenced by the late 80s, early 90s, and the high school-based films of John Hughes. Yes, okay, John Hughes. When I grew up listening to, uh, watching John Hughes films, we're talking, let's think now, The Breakfast Club, The Sixteen Candles, John Hughes, A Weird Science. Well, all those, all those kind of teen films. Oh, God, I love those teen, teen films. Pretty in Pink, Molly Ringwald. See, I've been associating Americana with like the 50s and the 60s and Monroe and all those sort of people. But to me, Americana, I should have really, I mean, I've, I've read it now, so it's too late to say it, but Americana is uh, Pretty in Pink and The Breakfast Club. When I'm feeling blue, all I have to do is take a look at you. No. Volume swell. Yeah, imagine that. Blue, all I have to do is take a look at you. Then I'm not so blue. Just imagine now. Yeah. Pretty girl in the 80s wearing a pink dress. This is a simple song. Gonna write it for a friend. My shirt is inside out. I'm messy with the pen. He met Margaret on a rooftop. It's like last day at school where everyone puts their and he was signatures like, on your white school shirt. Up. He had flashes of the good life. He was like, should I jump off this building now or do it on the double? The romantic notion of jumping off a building Baby, when you're a teenager. Baby, if your love is in trouble. Baby, if your love isn't true. Baby, if your love is in trouble. Baby, if your love is in trouble. Jumping off a building because your love's when in trouble. You know, you know. Whoa. Whoa! We're back to if you know, you know. When you know, you know. Oh, when you know, you know. Makes me laugh. Running down that path when you're good. Okay. Home. We're revisiting when themes. You know, you know. The words on my phone. Okay. This is Jack Antonoff, yeah. Their flies, their white knives, their black eyes, and their blue eyes. If you're asking yourself, how do you know? And that's your answer. The answer is no. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Run, 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 your hands on fire. Sounds like quite an important song. Margaret. Baby, if your love is in trouble. Baby, Baby if, if your, your love, love is, is in trouble. trouble. Baby, Baby, if your love is in trouble. When you know, you know. When you know, you know. It kind of makes me laugh. Running down that path. you good as gold. Key. 
that bit was good. We'll listen to that bit again. And when you're old, because when you know, you know, and when you're old, you're old. Like Hollywood and me. When you're old, you're old. I think she means like Marilyn Monroe Hollywood when she's talking about it. The diamond on your ring, the soul that you bring to the table, the one that makes me sing in a minor key, because when you know, you know. What is it that she knows? So if you don't know, don't give up, because you never know what the new day might bring. Maybe tomorrow you'll know. Maybe tomorrow you'll know. Hmm. Doesn't half sound like unrequited love again. He met Margaret on a rooftop. She was wearing white and he was like, I might be in trouble. He had flashes of the good life. He was like, should I jump off this building now? Or do it on the double? Not sure. Maybe if your love is this cold Words on my friends With their red flags and their white knives Their black eyes and their blue eyes you're If you're asking yourself How do you, do you know? know? And that's your, and that's your answer. answer The answer, the answer is, is no, no. Yeah. I've got to run I've got to run Run, 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 run Like your head's on fire Run away like your head is on fire Run away like your head's on fire. Oh God, her voice is so beautiful. Baby, if your love is in trouble. Baby, if your love is in trouble. When you know, when you know, when you know, you know. When you know, you know. It kind of makes me laugh. Running down that path. When you know, you know When you're old, you're old But Hollywood and me The diamond on your ring The soul that you bring to the table The one that makes me sing That bit I just sang over it again Let's just listen to it without me f***ing it up coming up. I mean, join the party. <laughs> Here we go. By the way, the party is December 18. Very specific. Let's this out, Because when you know, you know. When you're old, you're old. The party will be me. That diamond on your ring. The soul that you bring to the table. One that makes me see. Spectre enters the room again. Obviously, he's a dead murderer now, but I mean, back when he was producing in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. 
I mean, has anyone else said this, but the production on this album is very Phil Spector. Go and listen to The Long and Winding Road. What a weird thing, like bringing in a brass section just for the very... Just for the fade out at the very end of the song. Why would you do that? Okay. Going into Fishtail. Um, written by Lana Del Rey. Don't you dare say that you'll be my oh, Joshua, Frederick, really Constanti, Jack Antonoff, and Anne. You wanted me sadder. You wanted me sadder. Tumblin. You couldn't get smaller writing than that. Look at it. To me now, it's this is like this is Lana Del Rey inflections and vocal rhythms. She's just whispering into the mic. This sounds like disintegration by the cure. Is she influenced by disintegration by the cure? I bet she is. I'm almost Victorian. You wanted me sadder. Whoa! You wanted me sadder. It's like I forgot. Side A had a bit of electronica on it. Kind of like big basses and things, but since then we've kind of been on a bit of a different journey. Bit of a auto tune there. Just bringing in that machine gun hi hat just for that one little bit. Whoa! Was that a dog? Was that a dog barking there? Let's just listen again. It's a dog. Jack Russell. Jack Russell was a wicket keeper, yeah, for England. If I had this louder, this is kind of anus flapping bass grin on here. Lots of really nice modern electronica touches going on here to spice up what is quite a traditional song. Auto tune on that vocal there. Fishtail. Why is there a dog? Don't you waste that you hair. Right, let's just read this chorus. Let's just read that chorus a minute, see what's going on about. You wanted me sadder. Can't you see it? For me. You are the one, and if I'm not the one for you, don't just say it. I was on the stairs, Ella Fitzgerald in the air, feeling hella rare. Baby, if you care, baby, don't you dare say you'll braid my hair. Baby, if you care, 
Don't you dare say that you really care. Don't you dare say that you'll braid my hair when you get home tonight if you don't really care. Don't you dare say that you'll braid my hair, babe, if you don't really care. Don't you braid my hair if you're not coming home to me. It seems to be another kind of song about someone who's with somebody who they don't believe necessarily feel as strongly for them as they do f for him. And while you feel that something's going wrong, you turn to music, you turn to Ella Fitzgerald, you turn to music because on the whole in life, music doesn't let you down. Music, music can let you down. I've had instances where music, 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 the music can die. The music can die. by the cure oh Sound, that reminds me of runaway then by kanye oh Hands on your whoa hands on your knees like a angelina jolie god angelina jolie holy shit lana del rey and angelina jolie sitting in a tree This, this song has taken a turn. So I've just got Lana Del Rey and Angelina Jolie naked now, skinny dipping. Brilliant. Peppers. Coffee and wine. Perfect duo. Whoa! Let me put your hands on your knees, you can braid my hair. Do a fat crisscross in the back somewhere. Jolie, hands on your knees, Angelina Jolie. Let me put your hands on your knees, you can braid my hair. Do a fat crisscross in the back somewhere. A sit up skirt, I don't have much to lose. It's very specific. My boyfriend, boyfriend tested positive for COVID, it don't matter. We've been kissing, so whatever he has, I have, I can't cry. I mean, if, you, if, if all you catch is COVID, consider yourself lucky. This is very specific. I take it it's referencing a time in her life. On your knees, you can braid my hair. Do a fat crisscross in the back somewhere. Hands on your knees, I'm Angelina Jolie. Hands on your knees. Whoa! Put the pelican across the screen. What the? F what the hell's going on here? to the bass as well. <laughs> so 
like a rappy chorus. And another song referencing the hair. Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie. Lana Del Rey late to Glastonbury because of her hair. I'll run that shaker through some sort of effect. Whoa. Met my boyfriend at a taco truck. I met my boyfriend at a taco truck. Pass me my vape, I'm feeling sick. Oh, the little flutter, the little trill. I'm still picturing her delicate in a white dress with the wind blowing and all of her words getting lost in the wind. Caribbean blue. Oh, it's called Taco Truck. The talking is going to be by Margaret. Did she say someone calls her Lolita? This, this side of music has been more catchy and a bit more pop music. Side B was the anomaly. Side B was the anomaly. Yes. Yes, bit of modern, modern there. Yeah, that's why they call me, no, not Lolita, Lanita, not Lolita. That's why they call me Lanita. When I get down, I'm Benita. Don't come find me in Reseda. I'll go crazy, read my gold chain, it says Lanita. When I'm violent, it's Carlito's way. That was um, Al Pacino, wasn't it? Blood on my feet, on the street, I'm dancing crazy. Actually, the backing is a sort of Madonna type. You can imagine Madonna singing on the top of this, can you? Well, I could. So would you have spoken part? Featuring Margaret Qualey, Qualley. And that's, uh, she's Jack Antonoff's fiance. And the subject of the song Margaret. So this is her now. So I'm hearing, basically, uh, I've been going on about how delicate this woman's vocals are, but I'm getting the vibe that she can rap as well. A rappy singing. So, here's my question. If this is the Americana album, if I, li if I listen through to a back catalogue, am I gonna, am I gonna hear lots of like electronic rap type albums? Like albums that are, more similar to this than the rest of this album? In the comments, please. What should be the next Lana Del Rey? Which should be the next Lana Del Rey album I listen to? We're getting high now because we're older. Wow. Put the pelican across again. Yeah, 
Yeah. That was 80s. That was like Ultravox or Squeeze or something then. Cool for cats. I think the, the defining thing about this track is the bass, how deep it is, and the fact she's doing more of a rappy vocal. This track samples her track Venice Beach from a 2019 album, Norman Rockwell. It features the grimy, heavy, original and unheard version of Venice Beach. Venice Beach. Venice Bitch. Venice Beach. Venice Bitch. I like that play on words, Venice Bitch. So, so she's using a previous track here, but a version that no one had heard before. I like this. If her previous stuff sounds like this, I'm gonna like it. Karma police, arrest this man. Uh, oh, God. We don't want to end on that. Hang on. Let's end on something prettier. Thank you very much. That was Lana Del Rey's album. Did you know that there's a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard? And what I get from that overall is that, yes, there is a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard and it was sealed off. And perhaps this album is an example of something that was once open, but is now sealed off. And to me, it was overall a diary set to music. There were elements of pop hits there, I would say, but it's quite hard to get through because you can try and put a song out there to capture the imagination of the of the general public. But if you make it too specific and you mention dates like December the 18th and specific events, it's hard for people to truly associate with that rather than just na 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 or whatever else. Do you know what I mean? When I was a kid, I was dancing to the birdie song and Ghostbusters. And I wasn't necessarily dancing to How Soon Is Now by The Smiths. Are you getting me? But this album, holy shit. Is this, is this a disintegration for 2023? Seriously, those of you who know, know. Is this 2023's disintegration? like an outpouring from here pressed onto a piece of plastic. Are you with me? Are you with me? Are you with me? I'm trying to say is, is this album <laughs> Lana Del Rey. Did you know there's a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard? I really, really enjoyed that. It was a bit of a, bit of an epic, bit of an epic listen, really. I think the upshot of it is that I need to listen to more Lana Del Rey. Consider me a fan. Consider me a fan. If you want to support me and my endeavours, listening to music and making it a kind of communal experience, a bit of enjoyment, then please consider subscribing to my Patreon. If not, at least press like and please leave a comment because I read every comment and I enjoy reading comments. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. That was quite a journey, wasn't it? I appreciate it. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lana. Thank you. Thank you. Until next time, over and